I rarely take photos that don't have a human element in them. You can't help be fascinated by your own species, especially when we're such a diverse species. It's incredible how different we all are, but yet we share roughly the same hopes and dreams for life. We're essentially looking for a roof over our head, looking to find a mate in life and feeding ourselves and looking after our offspring. And that's about it, really. My name is Timothy Allen. I was the photographer on Human Planet, working alongside film crews, traveling to about 40 different countries. My task was to kind of weave a way through the itinerary of shoots and try and get alongside film crews on as many as I could. There were four teams and they were all out working at the same time. And there was only one of me, unfortunately. This picture comes from the Congo Valley in the Central African Republic. Deep in the jungle, we were camped alongside a Bayaka village. The fellow in the picture is a, a guy called Mungonje, one of the few within their tribe who carry the title of honey gatherer. The best hives exist up extremely tall trees. I was hanging from the crown of the tree by a set of climbing ropes that were rigged by one of our staff at the BBC, who's a rope access expert. Mongonje, however, is literally held on by that liana. And if you look closely, it's fraying. And the fraying is occurring from the friction that is rubbing against the bark as he moves up the tree. This is uh, a fantastic place called the Altai Mountains in Western Mongolia, right on the border with Kazakhstan. And Silo traditionally has been a, a hunter who uses golden eagles to hunt. And he was tutoring his 16-year-old boy, Beric, in the art of hunting with eagles. And we went out hunting with them for nearly two weeks through this incredible landscape that you can see here. This is off the coast of Borneo. The story we were filming was the Bajau Sea Gypsies. Traditionally, they live on boats. Here, they're, they've actually set up houses on the atolls. They don't step foot on land. You know, the nearest land is what you can see there in the background on that little hill. It's an incredible sight to behold, especially when you're hanging out of the side door of a helicopter with your feet dangling in thin air. This picture was shot in a place in Laos called the uh, Thousand Islands, essentially a part of the Mekong River. At this time of the year when the river swells, it's only the brave that go out fishing on the islands. The guy you can see in the middle of the picture is a, a Laotian fisherman called Sam Nieng. He's actually carrying his catch across the river. To take this shot, I was actually standing in water and I was attached by ropes to trees from all angles, sort of holding me in position. It's called a Jerawal, which is a festival that the Wadabi tribe of Niger have. It's the men's duty to appeal to the women, to dress up, to beautify themselves, and to appeal to the females of the tribe. In Wadabi culture, the women favor tall men with very white eyes, white teeth, and, and symmetry of their faces. This image comes from southern Ethiopia. That's the Suri tribe. They have uh, what are called donga, which are traditionally normally one village pitting against another, uh, where the men of the tribe fight, essentially, with these giant sticks. It's incredible to watch. I wasn't expecting it to be so gladiatorial and so epic. When someone submits, that's it, the fight's over. But people get hurt. Old rivalries do get settled within the donga rather than in the streets.
I was probably coming back with somewhere between 10 and 20,000 images from each shoot. The final edit of photos from the whole project was about 5,500. That's like a minute percentage of what, what was shot. I'm a heavy shooter because I'm very finicky about pictures. <laughs> This is um, from a place in Western Greenland called Elulisat. We went there to film the first sunrise of the year because Elulisat for three months of the year sits in complete darkness due to its um, latitude. That's actually the moon, so there's a, there's a fair bit of light. Life is lived within a kind of twilighty experience. Um, it's very pink and purple. The dump at Mombasa in Kenya, or just outside Mombasa, there were people working there, there were animals living there, there was a complete ecosystem at work in this place. I was looking actually for a vantage point to get a, a shot of the sunrise, and I was there for a couple of seconds before I realised that there was a foot near my foot, and there was a little boy asleep there. I don't normally take pictures without people's permission, and I'll never know whether this guy wanted to be photographed. In fact, I, I didn't even look through the viewfinder. I held the camera above him and auto-focused it and pressed it. There's not much to say about it. That's life on a dump. You, you sleep amidst the rubbish. It was a real pleasure and honour, I think, to see this kind of stuff. It's certainly the biggest single body of work I've ever created. If I pick an edit of my favourite photos from that year and a half, yes, I'm, I'm happy, I'm proud, but individually you can pick holes in any photo you take. I think that's a common trait amongst photographers. Mm -hmm.